Thank you to Preserve Gold for being a sponsor of our Newsmax podcast. Thinking about investing in physical gold or silver but not sure who you should trust? The folks at Preserve Gold are the perfect partner and highly rated for all your precious metal needs. Text the word DAILY to 50505 and get up to $10,000 in free gold and silver and to learn more today from Preserve Gold. Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Daily for Tuesday, May 21, 2024, the 21st day of the year. It's the third of four Tuesdays this month, and it's International Tea Day, so drink up. Here in the U.S. specifically, it is also National Eat More Fruits and Vegetables Day, or Vegetables <laughs> as important as that is, National Eat More Fruits and Vegetables Day wasn't a thing until 2015 when it was created, surprisingly, by the Dole Fruit and Vegetable Food Company. If you stayed up late last night, you know the NHL Conference Finals are now set after Edmonton eliminated Vancouver in Game 7. Edmonton and Dallas will now play in the Western Conference Finals. The New York Rangers and Florida Panthers play in the Eastern Conference. The winners will face off in the 2024 Stanley Cup. I mentioned yesterday the Dallas Mavericks are playing in the Western Conference NBA Finals as well. So it is a super exciting time for my friends and family in the big D. And I guess a lot of Texans in general, because there's fans all over the place. Big headline today, France and Belgium are breaking with the U.S. and other allies to support the ICC arrest warrants targeting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other Israeli leaders. Both countries releasing statements supporting the International War Crimes Court, that's the ICC, which issued arrest warrants yesterday for Israeli leaders and leaders of Hamas, which was a big story yesterday, now with the statement from France and Belgium and even even bigger story today. Bianca De La Garza, host of Newsline at Noon on Newsmax, spoke about it with former National Security Advisor and UN Ambassador John Bolton. Ambassador Bolton, you know, the ICC uh, bringing forward these uh, charges for Hamas and Netanyahu, uh, putting them kind of on the same line here. What's your reaction to that? And also, in addition, over the weekend, War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz threatened to quit. More pressure on Netanyahu as well there. Well, you know, the the pressure on Netanyahu, what Gantz said, uh, what the defense minister had said previously, the calls for uh, new elections by Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi some, some weeks back, uh, shows to me that the Biden administration has adopted the uh, regime change policy, their only, which is good news, their only mistake is they're applying it to the wrong country, Israel, rather than Iran, uh, a few hundred miles to the east. Uh, it's clear the Biden administration doesn't like Biden, but but let's let's be clear on this ICC uh, uh, prosecutor request for an arrest warrant. The International Criminal Court is a fundamentally illegitimate institution. Uh, it's a fantasy idea. It sits out there in the mm -hmm. atmosphere somewhere with no accountability, no control over it, no checks. And, you know, historically, uh, people have referred to Israel as the canary in the coal mine for the United States. And that's exactly what's going on here. When a prosecutor can go after a rule of law, democratic state in the middle of a war with no oversight, no accountability at all, it's only a matter of time before they come after the United States. The ICC is a thoroughly bad idea from top to bottom. And the fact that it has intervened in the middle of a war uh, without anybody uh, that has a stake in the war, like the United States or anybody else on the Security Council of the UN weighing in, uh, may well prolong the war, may well make a resolution more difficult. Mm. Uh, so the, the only silver lining here is this ought to cement the United States never having anything to do with the ICC. Former U.N. Ambassador and National Security Advisor John Bolton on Newsmax. If you missed it yesterday, this is the statement from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Branding Israel's leaders and soldiers as war criminals will pour jet fuel on the fires of anti-Semitism, those fires that are already raging on the campuses of America and across capitals around the world. It will also be the first time that a democratic country fighting for its life according to the rules of war is itself accused of war crimes. 
And overnight, Newsmax learned that three former U.S. foreign policy officials who served in President Trump's administration met with Prime Minister Netanyahu and other Israeli officials on Monday. One of those officials is Robert O'Brien who succeeded John Bolton as Trump's final national security advisor. You can read the full story on that at Newsmax.com. Don't worry, I am going to get to the Trump trial and the Michael Cohen stuff and all that, but staying with international news just for a moment. Coverage and reaction to the death of Iran's President Raisi, also known as the Butcher of Tehran, continues today. Mainly, it's reaction to the reaction of his death. This from Rob Schmidt tonight. During his reign, Iran sharply increased enforcement of the hijab and chastity law. Mass protests swept through the country in 2022 after the death of Masa Amini, who was detained and then died over allegedly wearing a loose headscarf. This is what it's like to live in Iran for the past 40 years. Raisi oversaw the security crackdown, killing hundreds of protesters, more than 20,000 others detained and imprisoned. He also funded the October 7th attacks and spent Iran's wealth funding terrorism around the world. So it's needless to say, a very terrible person has died in a helicopter crash. Tulsi Gabbard joins us now. She is the author of the book, For Love of Country, and it's very nice to see you uh, and nice to meet you here. Nice to see you, Rob. Um, and, and I, I want to start with, we, we saw the U.S. Senate today offer a prayer for this man. The Pope offering condolences, our State Department offering condolences. I, I, I can't fathom why. You know, it, it's, it's a, a real offensive action when you look at the policies of Iran and, frankly, how the Biden-Harris administration has continued to strengthen Iran's support for terrorism, support for terrorist Islamist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, mm-hmm. and how they continue to pose a direct uh, threat. Uh, it, it's mind-boggling to me to, for, to hear them do this, to see them do this, and also, frankly, to know that those who are likely in contention to fill those positions are people who hold those similar uh, uh, very hardline, radical Islamist theocratic positions that we've seen, unfortunately, at the leadership of Iran for so long. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a very interesting moment. I, I suspect not a lot will change in the short term. I'm curious what they think happened if they believe it was actually an accident. Rob Schmidt with former Hawaii Congresswoman, former Democrat and potential Republican vice presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard. Rob said he wonders if they, meaning Iran, actually believe that it was an accident. Well, Iran says it is now investigating the cause and circumstances of the helicopter crash that killed not only the president, but Iran's foreign minister and several other leaders. Massive, massive day of mourning in Iran, by the way, today. All right, the other top story, as I mentioned, former President Donald Trump back in court yet again today. Tomorrow, being Wednesday, they will have the day off from court again. Not sure what Trump's plans are yet, but this is coming after another day of Michael Cohen cross-examination by Trump's defense team yesterday exposed not only more lies, but that Michael Cohen actually stole money from his then-boss, Donald Trump. We get more from Eric Bowling. This clearly shows it's all a political witch hunt against a former president. Cohen said he requested 50 grand for IT services when the services were only $20,000. He then decided to steal the rest. One could argue Michael Cohen should be on trial. Well, let's just say he should be. Not trial. That didn't stop MSNBC's liberal lunatic Lawrence O'Donnell from trying to downplay the fact that Cohen stole money. Later, when Cohen was asked about that on redirect uh, by the prosecution, it didn't really sound like stealing $30,000. It sounded a lot like Michael Cohen doing the little that he could within that calculation to rebalance uh, the bonus he thought he deserved. And it still came out as less than the bonus he thought he deserved and the bonus he'd gotten the year before. What kind of garbage is that, Larry O'Donnell? He stole it. You can't rebalance your bonus. Despite what delusional people over on MSNBC say, when you zoom out and realize this case is based on a convicted felon and a prostitute, you see how insane it is. This case is over. Here now to break it all down. Trump attorney Lindsey Halligan. Lindsey, so Cohen goes liar, perjurer, and now 
admitted thief on the stand. Here's a dumb question. You're, a, you're an attorney. Can he be prosecuted for now admitting he stole money from Trump? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this was a great day for President Trump and his defense team. In this case, there's really no case without the testimony of Michael Cohen. And the problem for the prosecution is, well, it's Michael Cohen. So he completely blew himself up on the stand. Um, today on redirect, our defense merely was slamming the door shut on a case that should have never been brought in the first place. They should make sure that, one, they can clearly explain what the crime is. Two, they should make sure it's a rock solid airtight case with zero question as to, you know, President Trump's culpability. And they and three, they should have pursued this case uh, far in advance of the election. And they failed to do that here. They're relying on a key witness who uh, admitted to not only lying to his client, but also secretly recording to his client. And now we know he stole from his client. Attorney Lindsay Halligan, yet another member of the Trump legal team. On yesterday's Daily, you heard Donald Trump refer to CNN's Jake Tapper as fake Tapper. That was from his uh, weekend speech at the NRA. Well, even fake Tapper was shocked at this revelation. It's fascinating stuff, and I have to say I'm still kind of reeling from the revelation uh, that um, Michael Cohen stole money from the Trump organization, and that wasn't, at least to my knowledge, that the prosecution didn't right. get that get that out earlier, uh, because it's not as though um, the prosecution is going to be helped by further uh evidence that Michael Cohen is a shady character. But going to the heart of what you were telling your employer about what money you were owed and the extent of it, we're talking about $420,000. We've already seen the payment right, structure like here. This isn't like 15 bucks. It's not yeah, it's not like 15 bucks for a sandwich or something, right? You ever have your boss like send you out to buy lunch for the crew, you know, and you keep the change? It's not like that. More from Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, who was in court with President Trump last week. Only a handful of people have been allowed in this courtroom. Uh, and besides the media, it's not a lot of people. What was that like? It was surreal. Um, first of all, you're, you're in a criminal courtroom with the former president. That's surreal enough. Uh, that's never happened in American history. And then you actually hear the evidence brought by the prosecution. You quickly realize there's no case here. There's really no evidence here. And the, the prosecution's Alvin Bragg's, his entire case relies on the words of Michael Cohen. Uh, this thing is so ridiculous. But then you look at the judge and the judge, you know, has donated to Joe Biden, something that the vast majority of judges do not make political contributions. This judge has he, he has contributed to Joe Biden. His daughter works for the Democrats raising money and they're using the, 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 the trial um, as a basis to raise money for Democrats across the country. Yeah, uh, this is a terrible case, number one, but it's also a terrible misuse of the justice system. The judge should throw this case out. There simply is no case. Do you have a feel for where the jury is on this whole thing based on seeing it all play out firsthand? I don't really know per se, but I will tell you there's probably one, maybe two jurors on there that when Michael Cohen was getting cross-examined and his lies were beginning to be um, unraveled, uh, you had a couple uh, jurors make faces, you know, like their body language looked a little interesting, uh, like they were questioning, why are we even here? Hmm. And so, you know, my hope is that you have one or two jurors who does the right thing, who realizes that there's no crime here. This is all election interference. This is a political hit job brought to us by Joe Biden, Alvin Bragg and this crazy judge, Judge Mershon in New York. Yeah. Um, your name, Congressman. Again, we've talked about this, but you're at the top of the list to uh, to run with the former president. There's also a report that Trump would apparently support you if you decided to run for governor in Florida in 2026 when DeSantis is termed out. If you had a choice right now, right now, which job would you want more? <laughs> Look, the honest truth is I don't really have a choice, man. Uh, I'm just here doing my job as a member of Congress. Um, I was in New Hampshire on Friday, Wisconsin on Saturday, doing everything we can to make sure Donald Trump gets back in the White House. When it comes to the vice presidency, you know, his campaign and his team, um, obviously him, he's going to make a decision. And whatever that decision is, you live with that and you move on. Um, going going forward into the future, you can't predict politics, especially Florida politics. If you follow Florida politics, yeah. you can't predict it. You just do your job, and then if something comes up, hopefully the voters are with. No, you got that right. Uh, Congressman, good to have you on this morning. Look forward to having you back soon. Thank you, Congressman Byron Donalds. 
Florida Congressman and potential Trump running mate Byron Donalds. And since I live in Florida, yes, he would also make a great governor post Ron DeSantis. On yesterday's Daily, I mentioned President Biden's weekend commencement speech at Morehouse College and how a lot of people were going to be talking about that throughout the day, right? And they did. Let's go to Carl Higby, host of Frontline at 5 o'clock Eastern. They propped him up. They put him on stage to speak at this historically black college. I, look, thinking he was going to be some sort of good idea and a great man on the podium. And man, did he go off script. Delaware State University. You guys are good. <laughs> they got me elected. You all y'all think I'm kidding. Most of all, what does it mean, as you've heard before, to be a black man who loves his country? Even if it doesn't love him back in equal measure. Oof. Doesn't love you back? Hey, this is a country that has Black History Month. Joe Biden was speaking at a black college. His administration has pushed and prioritized the color of people's skin despite qualifications through DEI. And he's going to say that this country doesn't love them back? This is exactly the garbage that drives a wedge in the middle of America. And quite frankly, his audience at Morehouse College, where he was speaking, was also bothered by it. Students turn their backs on Joe Biden as he panders to them. I mean, maybe it's because he was once eulogized by a member of the KKK. I don't know. Maybe it is less to do with who he panders to or whether or not he was actually a member of the NAACP, which he keeps claiming. But the fact that he has royally, I mean, we are talking royally, screwed up this country. He's divided us more than we ever have been before by standing there bragging about his support for a criminal who died of a fentanyl overdose, jo George Floyd, who he also once compared to MLK. I mean, if you can believe it. I mean, maybe those kids in the audience turn their backs on him because, like every other American, regardless of their skin color, their future's pretty bleak right now. Not because they're black, but because companies aren't expanding. They're not hiring. That means job prospects to pay off their student loans are far and few between. No one can afford to buy a home, pay off their groceries, pay, for, pay off their credit card, or even pay for gas. But I'm sure those kids were super comforted by Joe Biden's interpretation of being black in a democracy. You missed your high school graduation. You start a college just as George Floyd was murdered. And there was a reckoning on race. It's natural to wonder democracy you hear about actually works for you. What is democracy? If black men are being killed in the street. Black people being killed in the street? Really? I mean, he did leave out, by and large, by other black people. According to the FBI, in 2019, that's the most recent statistics we could find for you, 2,906 black people were killed. 2,574 of them were black-on-black -black murders. Only 246 of those murders were committed by white people. Black people are killing other black people at a rate 12 times higher than white people are killing black people. But Joe Biden left that out because it doesn't fit the narrative. It's, it's about votes for him, not about solutions. I, I, look, I'm sorry, but this is a commencement speech. You're sending these children and that audience out into the world, supposedly with their best foot forward, and you're telling them that they may get gunned down in the street? They have no future. That, like, that has no positive future in America. I mean, what an inspiring message, right? Again, that is Carl Higby, host of Frontline, 5 o'clock Eastern, former Navy SEAL, by the way. And keep in mind, and this is equally as disturbing, right? President Biden didn't write the speech. I mean, he probably, maybe, proofread it and thought, yeah, this is good stuff. But someone else actually wrote that. And for as many people as there are seeing through it, there are a lot more that still believe it, unfortunately. Oh, by the way, then, I also mentioned yesterday, Biden went to Detroit, where he spoke to the NAACP about being the vice president under Barack Obama during the COVID pandemic. And when I was vice president, things were kind of bad during the pandemic. And I have mentioned this before, but when I first started hosting the Newsmax Daily last year, I was working at WBT Radio in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Shout out to them. Amazing station, amazing people, and an amazing city. I love Charlotte. My contacts in Charlotte are telling me that former President Donald Trump is planning to attend this weekend's NASCAR race in Charlotte. This weekend is, of course, Memorial Day weekend. The Coca-Cola 600, one of the biggest NASCAR races of the year at Charlotte Motor Speedway. I'm not sure if it's okay for me to say that, so I am not going to mention specific names, but that is directly from a high-ranking Speedway official to a high-ranking member or members of the media. So there you go. Trump could be going to the race in Charlotte. I was fortunate enough to be at the Daytona 500 back in 2020 when Trump attended. Now, in Daytona, the airport is right next to the Speedway. All right, so Air Force One literally did a flyover. This was before the race. We were in the infield, and Air Force One was like right there. It was incredible. This should be amazing. I'm sure Trump Force One will, you know, buzz Charlotte Motor Speedway. All right, be sure to keep up with all the news all day on Newsmax, beginning each and every day with Wake Up America. Newsmax is available on most major cable systems, including AT&T, Comcast, Cox Cable, Optimum, Spectrum, Xfinity, and many others, as well as Dish and DirecTV. Also, make sure you're streaming the new Newsmax Plus. If you're not, go to NewsmaxPlus.com, get signed up. You can get a free trial there. It includes all of your favorite shows and hosts with fantastic expert analysis, their special programming, documentaries, and more. NewsmaxPlus.com. What are you waiting for? I'm Tony Marino. Thank you for listening to the Newsmax Daily. Continue to share it with your friends and family. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Eat some fruits and vegetables and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.